Hello everyone. We are officially jumping into the first day of our course, starting with knowing about the most revolutionary architecture in the field of natural language processing, in my opinion, which is none other than the transformer architecture, which was introduced in the paper Attention is All You Need in 2017 by Google. In day one, we are gonna get to know about this architecture a bit along with the history of the architecture and why this architecture was introduced and then the most important part of this day's video which is to understand the types of transformers now let's start with understanding what are transformers transformers are a type of a deep learning model architecture like i said it has revolutionized the field of natural language processing and not just that, it has even revolutionized computer vision with the advent of a variant of transformers which is vision transformers. And then, not just that, if you are gonna consider speech a separate domain, then yeah, it has revolutionized that as well. But we usually consider speech to be a part of natural language processing because it is working with natural language, right? At the core, this revolutionary architecture transformers was just designed to handle sequential data such as text by processing the entire input simultaneously rather than sequentially. If you remember the issue with RNNs or LSTMs is that with the longer sequence length it is very computational intensive because that happens sequentially and when you do things sequentially it is one computationally intensive and two it will allow a problem which is forgetting but here with transformers they made it possible to process it parallelly with the help of a mechanism known as self-attention a self-attention is a mechanism which will allow the model to weigh the importance of different parts of the input while producing an output so we saw badano attention right badano attention was an attention which still was working sequentially if you remember it was just you know providing some context to each time step in a recurrence state but with transformers it will see the whole sequence together and then provide information uh, saying that you know these parts are important since it is going to be parallel that is a key feature here it is parallel processing so since you can process it parallelly, you can handle both short and long range dependency in data very effectively. So it is highly scalable. And self-attention mechanism is a mechanism which will allow you to focus on the different parts of the sequence. So you have got your attention inside. And then and another important component which was introduced in Transformers architecture was positional encoding, which will enable the model to understand the order of elements of the inputs in the input sequence let's say um i have a statement like i'm using an android phone and it is going good right now but apple seems to be a good competitor and it has let's say security features this it has same context you know like same embedding if you are saying about embeddings right same embedding as a meaning right the it here the first it refers to android mobile and then the second it refers to ios mobile right how you understand that it is because the way i have positioned the it in the sequence i spoke to you right so that is how even model will understand that you know this it refers to this specific entity this kind of a process is known as co-reference resolution which i spoke about briefly in the first prerequisite itself and that is very important you need to resolute you know the references so that you'll be able to understand the context of your input sequence better that is very much possible with the help of transformers so it has even more features um these are the four main features one could be that it is a very flexible architecture you can add any component anywhere to suit your use case for example if you want to make it a vision transformer 
replace this text encoder vision with a vision encoder and you are ready with the vision transformer like that okay so that is again a key feature here now forget that name word and gpt which is there here um i need you to focus on these words encoder and decoder we already know how encoder decoder network works so this is an encoder network and this is a decoder network when you give an input to your input embedding machine learning encoding will be computed and then your attention will be calculated and then based on these attention values those outputs will be provided to a feed forward network and then that information will be shared with the decoder which again will repeat the process here as well but there is some unique components there but if you see as an overall of how i said this flow this is eerily similar to the flow which we spoke about in the previous encoder decoder video as well if you remember yes this is going to be very close and similar to how any encoder decoder works what makes this architecture stand out out of all those architectures is these components the multi head attention your mask multi head attention which is there here and then your position encoding these three are the three main components which makes the transformer architecture stand out of all those architectures which were there before transformers so yeah now that we have a bit of idea about what is transformers let's see why it came into the picture you see with sequential data there were rnn particularly lstm which people were using it and then they were thinking yeah it's good you know like um, i'm fine with that it is able to handle time series data it is able to handle text data basically anything which has a sequence but there were some limitations the first one being sequential processing rnns whatever network it is regardless it processes the data sequentially which means it is slower to train on a longer sequence and then like i said you will do back propagation through time so you know like if you go from one state to another with continuous differentiation you will face an issue which is vanishing gradient and then you have limited context lstms were good i mean like better but not enough up to the mark but still they struggle to remember long range context why it is sequential right if you are going to remember everything you learned from your first grade to 12th grade you are not going to remember it right if i tell you to think about it you are not going to think it sequentially you will think it like okay uh, in my first i did this and my second i did this it's not like that you will just remember first your alphabets and then you'll think about some words you learned and then you'll straight away go to your 12th because that is how your attention is you are not giving equal importance to all the sequences which are there in your past right that was a feature which is which was there in transformers because of the parallel attention but it is not the case with lstms and then there is the issue of parallelization difficulty you can't uh, parallelize with rnn modern gpus can be used to its fullest potential with the help of parallelization but rnns unfortunately couldn't do that so transformers was developed to address these limitation offering a more efficient and effective way so that you can process any data which is sequential in nature now we know what is transformers why it came into the picture but there should be history right like they should have some ancestor architecture from there it, it would have been derived something like that so the first one being rnn lstm and then came and came a first paper which was using attention which is badano attention and if you haven't covered that part it is already covered in the previous prerequisite video so please watch that i have explained how badano attention works there so that was the first architecture which was using attention and these guys took an inspiration from there and then made this amazing research paper which is attention is all you need and don't worry i'm giving you an overview in this video and in the next section soon enough we'll be seeing a detailed explanation about each of these components and their working in day 2 so what is this transformer architecture the transformer architecture was published 
in the attention is all you need paper which was again published by Vazwani et al who was working in google then in 2017 the key innovations were multi-head attention and portion encoding the multi-head attention also includes master multi-head attention the model achieved a state-of-the-art performance on machine translation task because at that time any task which involves a sequence to sequence uh, kind of a task will be mostly benchmarked as a translation task so for that they are using blue score that we already know so yeah uh, that was about the transformers architecture and then there came a storm which is written language model google in 2018 released a model which is bidirectional encoder representation so that was shortly known as bert that showed you know like the power of pre-trained uh, pre models but before that itself there was an another model which was released and that is generative pre-trained transformer by open ai but you know like uh, these two let's say like are the reason we are in this world you know this llm world these two are the parent architectures of all of those with the attention is all you need architecture being the parent architecture of these but these two propelled the field of nlp a lot with the subsequent models being uh, t5 robetta excelnet and then there are like other things as well there is albert and then you have your llms coming into the picture later everything came into the picture but these two were the prior uh, things and that is why we say encoder models as bird family and decoder models as gpt family okay these are the ancestors but like i said transformers didn't just revolutionize you know, the field of nlp it also revolutionized computer vision why is that in 2020 there was an architecture which was released and that is vision transformer so that architecture applied transformer architecture to image classification where this transformers uh, architecture was adapted to do adapted to do multimodal task by combining text image even audio processing all were done okay so that was the most recent revolution and how that happened they just replaced this encoder with a vision encoder okay which will have convolutions and so on and so forth which is related to computer vision image processing and all but this is the history of transformers if you remember i spoke about two things which is bert and gpt as family right that is what we are going to see now because here you will have a confusion when to use which transformer architecture now we are gonna solve that problem by understanding the transformer types when you can use which transformers so there are three main types of transformers encoder only decoder only and encoder decoder if you are gonna use an encoder only architecture it is gonna be a bird family which has roberta and then there is still bird and then so on and so forth there are lots of models which uh, in which these two are the most famous one and in decoder only there are n number of models with gpt being the parent model for all of those there is uh, other models like llama your mistral your quen and so on and so forth every model which we are seeing right now are mostly decoder only and then encoder decoder which is basically the whole transformer architecture and that architecture is followed by models like bart and t5 with bart being the first but t5 being the most famous model with encoder decoder architecture now let's first understand about encoder only transformers which is both family models as an architecture this transformer only consists of a stack of encoder layers which has two main components one is multi-head self-attention and then feed forward neural network so here you can see it is multi-head attention and feed forward if you are going to consider the embedding as a component as well then yes you can also add that as a component but these two are the main component and here it is said here you can see it has a stack of encoder layer usually the stack is six as per the paper but it is pretty huge right now 24 32 and it is going on and on but six it means imagine this is one stack okay there will be six stacks one above another okay so more the number of sta ta stack better will be the reasoning because the level of reasoning will be higher if you increase the depth all right so yeah 
um that is why we are going for 22 24 32 even in consumer grade right now key characteristic here is that you will have a bi-directional context and how that works uh, we'll see that later okay so it can look at the in entire input sequence in both directions so it suits for tasks that require understanding about the entire context so what does this mean um we will not go in detail with encoder only because our aim is to understand about llms in this course so first i'll give you a walkthrough about how this bird model is trained okay let's take a sample here what happens is here you will have a task for it to do like this i love mask because it is fun. okay this task is known as mask language modeling okay if you remember in text encoder of lstms the encoder has the whole context but decoder will know only till the previous time step so decoder will be knowing like this i i love okay i love mask and so on and so forth this is how decoder will learn but encoder will learn like this okay this task is known as mask language modeling but here it won't be able to do this it will say some word here and this task is known as next token prediction okay since it is mask language modeling so what this task will do for the architecture is basically it will try to generate or it will try to say that okay this mask is let's say i love cricket okay so i love cricket because it is fun okay so to understand because to play it is fun let's say i put it like this if i ask i love mask it can say anything right but if i say i love mask because to play is fun you know like it means it is saying something about sports so to understand the whole context it will force the model okay that is how encoder model basically works now what are the use cases you can solve with the help of encoder like i said wherever the task which requires context understanding you'll use that some of the samples are text classification let's say you want to categorize your news you want to classify your email as ham and spam a sentiment analysis all can be done with the help of word family models and here is an example don't worry about the code it's very simple first we are creating a tokenizer which is bird based on case here and then uh, that will basically convert the sentence into tokens and then provide a number for those tokens based on its vocabulary and then that is that is provided to the model but for sequence classification which is a bird model with a classifier layer at the final which is known as classification head that will try to say i absolutely love this movie the acting was superb no, like uh basically this said the absolute wrong thing because it was not tra trained well basically for classification but yeah this is how it works it said sentiment is negative but yeah it's fine okay if you see here uh there is an another task as well which is ner but before going into that uh it is very important to know that why you can use but for this task again see uh this model was not trained well okay there are other variants as well but this model is very simple so i just use that but is very effective for sentiment analysis because it understand the context and nuances in the language but the most important thing is it is bidirectional in nature that is why it is very good to capture the sentiment because in real world we'll use a lot of buts you know uh, first we'll talk it a bit positive and then we'll say it negative but the overall sentence to understand the whole sentiment you no know, like it needs to understand the overall sentence so that is why bird family architectures are pretty good for sentiment analysis and then there is an er which again it's gonna have a head for an er and then here if you see apple inc is planning to open a new store in new york city if you see here apple is said as p or if i say as simple apple right it is gonna say like you know fruit but i said apple ink okay so it saw the position and said like you know yeah uh, it is about an incorporation so which means it is an organization right so that is what it is trying to say and it has it has also said that you no know, like ink is also an organization together 
B org means beginning of organization and I org is like, you know, it is saying it's a part of an organization entity itself. And then it's saying like, you know, New York. So beginning of New York city, new is first there. And then York is also an entity. Okay. City, um, New York city, if it like, it considers that also uh, as a part of the location entity. As you can see, yeah, this was a very good uh, performance. Why? Because they understand the context around each word, which is crucial for identifying the entities. Because if I said, I love eating apples, the apple means a fruit, but I love eating apple from apple. That apple, second apple means an organization, right? So for that, it needs to understand the whole context. That is what it is being implied in this example. Then another uh, task, which requires a lot of uh, understanding and basically this task is the parent task of whatever we are doing right now which is question answering basically asking your ai a question if you see even ChatGPT is a Q qa model because nowadays llms are trained with huge context length and then they are trained for longer time it has a wide range of knowledge so qa is done by decoder models as well but when it came only encoders were good enough to process those context and here if you see this is how you can use it okay and if you just put the model outputs right this is how it will look and then if you do an arc max and then you do touch or decode sorry tokenizer or decode you will get your answer but here also the bad direction nature so if you see it as an overall right wherever uh, there has been a requirement for understanding of the context encoder can be used but decoder is probably a bit opposite if you want to put it that way decoder only transformers uh, consist a stack of decoder layers which will have mass to multi hcl attention feed forward network and then there is an another component as well which is final head or you know like if you want to put it as softmax layer or we generally call it as projection Okay, because that is what will project of which token it is next. If we are seeing it as a component of decoder, then yes, but usually it is not seen like that. Okay, so now what are the key characteristics of GPT family models or generally decoder only models? First is that it is auto regressive in nature, unlike encoders, which can see what are the tokens prior and next to a given token. It is not possible with the help of decoder because with decoder will mask the upcoming tokens, which is the future token so that it will be generative in nature. And that is known as auto regressive and the context it can see it is not bidirectional since we are masking the future. It is going to be unidirectional context. Now you might wonder what is the difference between RNN and a GPT model? If you have wondered it, you are in a great space of understanding natural language processing, especially these advanced architectures. If you see with RNN with Badanu attention, which was the last part of our prerequisite, we built a translation model in which the LSTM networks were used for encoders and decoders. But for decoder, we, we provided an attention, which is Badanu attention. This attention also still holds a state like any LSTM would be right. But this is more focusing on which token to give more importance. But that value itself is said based on all the sta uh, time steps it has come across stored in a state, right? So it is not parallel in nature. It is sequential in nature. So with long range, it will fail. And also it is very computationally intensive when you go with sequential. But with transformers, the attention is going to be parallel in nature, not sequential, which means whatever issues we usually think of with a sequential network, those are almost solved. Like, you know, everything are almost solved with the help of this parallel attention, which is there in GPT family. What are the models which we can see in this GPT family models in GPT series, which is GPT one, two, three. And then there is four right now, right? So all of those 
along with that there is models like ctrl which was an old model which is basically non-existent right now and then there are other models like your llama mistral whatever llm we are seeing right now they are almost like you know almost every model are decoder only models but if you remember when i'm talking about encoder itself i said encoder models are pretty good at capturing context and there is a thing we need to address of why decoder only models are preferred which we'll see in the encoder decoder section use cases what are the use cases you can do basically any use case which requires generation of a token regardless of what you are generating it doesn't matter it can be done with the help of decoder only model so here is an example we are taking a gpt2 model along with the tokenizer we are tokenizing we are just initializing a tokenizer and a model we are tokenizing a prompt where we say like you know in a world where ai has become sentient basically this is a model which was trained for text completion so what it will do is it will try to complete the sentence from there now the input ids or your basically your transformer token inputs are calculated here by encoding this sentence and that is provided to the model and that is generating some text which is decoded with the help of tokenizer and here is the text in a world where AI has become sentient it is hard to imagine a better time to be a human we are going to say uh, have to start thinking about how we are doing things says dr michael s hirsch and so on and so forth it is trying to generate some coherent data right it is a very simple model but a very powerful and good model in its own way now why should we use decoder only model since we are masking the future it is very ideal when you want to generate a text because it can generate coherent text and contextually relevant relevant text based on all the past sequences it has seen by predicting the next token and since it is auto regressive in nature it will allow it to maintain consistency and coherence in longer generated sequences now let's see about the next family of model which is none other than, than the encoder decoder transformer which is not which is nothing but the attention is all you need the og transformer architecture architecturally as you all might know now it is an encoder decoder transformer where it is a sequence to sequence network consisting of both encoder and decoder stacks the architecture includes an encoder stack a decoder stack and a cross attention mechanism which will provide information from encoder to decoder if you all remember on the rnn with badanu attention for machine translation we were constructing a encoder decoder network and then i explained there of how the tokens will be generated first the encoder will see the whole context and that will be used as an input along with the previous token as a context to an rnn state here the only difference is that the whole input are still provided via a mechanism which is known as cross attention mechanism and then similar to a normal decoder only model all tokens are seen with the help of a masked uh, attention you know like only previous to a current token that's all okay so it is parallel what are the key characteristics it is suitable when you want to convert one sequence into another and it can handle input and output uh, sequences being of different length and it combines benefits of both encoder and decoder architecture the use cases are you can use uh, like you can do machine translation there so here is an example i translated english to german the house is wonderful and it became das haus is wonderful sorry if my german is not that good and then there is another use case where you want to summarize it here you have it okay when i gave a passage it was able to summarize it and here if you see uh, the encoder decoder transformers are well suited for summarization task because the encoder can capture the important information from a long input text and then the decoder will summarize it by generating the next word okay similar case was with uh translation first the encoder uh, will capture the meaning of the input sentence and decoder will just try to say that in german okay it is like how we will 
you know translate for example uh, you want to speak in let's say tamil but you don't know tamil a, lo- a lot okay so first what you will do is you will think a sentence in english or your mother tongue whatever it is hindi bengali uh, malayalam whatever it is doesn't matter you will think in that and then you will try to put that sentence in tamil or whatever language you want to put it in so basically you understand the crux and then you construct it right that is how encoder decoder transformer works now you might think yes now this is able to understand the context better and it can generate as well so it is the best of uh, combining the best of both of these so theoretically these should have been used for llms right llm should have been built on encoder decoder transformer right this is what this was a question even i thought and this is the question i said we'll discuss at the end once we discuss about the other architectures as well first let me conclude about these three encoder only architectures are very good at understanding text and decoder only is very powerful for text generation and encoder decoder like i said will combine but there is a problem with encoder decoder which is inherently the problem of encoder okay encoder expects you to have a fixed input length you know like not fixed input length let's say a fixed max input length so let's say i have 1024 if you do, if you go to 1025 encoder won't work well okay if not not work at all but with decoder it is very flexible in nature and it is highly scalable and there have been lot of researches to improve the attention there is sliding window attention and so on and so forth which has provided a context window of around 128k tokens which is never possible with encoder because to do that kind of attention uh, you can't do it with encoder okay you can't move a window with encoders that is not something which is done in practice right now and that is why uh, llms are done usually with decoder only models and there is only very less gap between a decoder model and an encoder decoder model with all those advancements still if you want to know like you know which is better at understanding context if you theoretically retrain with the same amount of data and fine tune it with the same amount of data encoder decoder theoretically is the superior architecture but the decoder only models are very flexible in nature and it is very highly scalable in nature as well and it is very versatile because it is open ended right you can generate n number of tokens out of it even though it is not trained for let's say 4096 token you can generate 4096 tokens out of it and that is not something which you can do with the help of encoder decoder so yeah now that is an introduction for llm this is why llms are decoder only architecture and this is not something which we usually think about you know uh, why encoder decoder architectures are uh, superior but still decoder only models are used as llms this is how is the answer in my opinion but if you have any contradictions let me know your thoughts in the comment section So yeah guys that's it for this video I I hope you like this video if you like this video please hit the like button share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon I hope you all uh would help me reach 10000 subscriber but by the end of this course and yeah I'll see you all in the next video until then happy learning